Hello everyone and welcome in this new recording. We continue here with the devlog session number 20. Last time we already started to review the different um, web GPU symbols that uh, we're implementing. So we have to finish this. I mean finishing is a bit work, bigger word here because uh, I'm still writing some of those uh, symbols but we have to catch up with uh, where I am currently at uh, because I would like to do some kind of um, yeah dynamic um, devlog, um, real-time devlog but uh, first we need to review all the existing symbols so where should we start? Um, we had already a triangle, triangle example, but um, I think yes, this one here was about porting this triangle example to SDL2 because before that we were using GLFW, and uh, I didn't really have a full support for windowing and mouse management and everything in the, in that library, while I had already implemented everything like that in SDL2 so I decided uh, I just needed to yeah get back to SDL2 which is anyway a bigger and more complete framework so it's a good thing I believe to to use this one let's uh, get back into the code again so where do we have all this so we probably have just a triangle SDL okay that's it um, before that, I believe, for instance, if we check triangle, we were using a different base class. So in triangle, we're using just this app context, and this app context is defined in this um, web GPU app header file, and this one is relying on GLFW. But now, for this new iteration, we have a different one, which is the SDL app context, and this one is going into a dedicated file here. And uh, the idea is the same as with the GLFW context. You're preparing everything you need to have this context ready for your different symbols. Um, what does it mean to prepare everything here? Basically, it means creating one of those SDL window. The SDL window, actually, I have that implemented as part as my, of my, um, my core library, um, the MV core library. So we can just go there directly and we'll find it. In the MV core, we have SDL window, which itself is actually a um, re-implementation of the abstract window class and that's how I'm providing access to everything I could possibly need currently from a window like um, mouse event handling, keyboard event handling, uh, window resizing functions, um, window title control position control and everything like that so i'm not going to do to go into the too much details on that that's also we we provide support for setting up a gl context and i think we probably have the same thing for a vulcan context if i'm not mistaken if i'm if i don't for, forget something here uh not really obvious. Do we have something? Yeah, I think it's the same thing as GL context, but we have something. Yeah, we have Vulcan here in the threads, and you don't really need to specify anything specific to a Vulcan context by itself, I believe. I mean, I'm using that somewhere. It's just I don't quite remember exactly how. Never mind. So, yes, with this simple, the main idea was really to try to move to SDL. And um, what else do we do in there? We create, so this context is going to create the SDL window. And um, I think the key key thing is how you're going, going to generate a web GPU surface from this window. And that's why we have a dedicated function here, set up window and get surface. 
which is taking into account that this is a SDL window and so from that window you can get the handle this handle is actually oops sorry oh no a structure containing um, different elements depending on what is your current platform so in the case of a uh, Windows platform it's going to contain your um, window handle and your instance and that's exactly what you need actually to prepare um, this uh, chain struct from which you can create the surface the web GPU surface so yeah this is handle um, on the back hand side next what do we do you have prepare buffer you're going to create a buffer uh, containing position and colors three position three colors so defining a triangle index buffer you have one two three indices and four i'm wondering why i'm writing four of them i think we could just uh, as well write free or maybe that maybe it's going to complain because it's not properly aligned or something i'm not sure at this level um what else and you create those buffers you set up your camera yeah that's where things are getting a bit more interesting and we didn't have that in the previous example from the triangle glfw version we now have support for this target camera controller and this one is going to use the SDL window because you have to connect uh, the mouse event on the window so you can track when uh, the user is moving the mouse up and down or left right and from this information you can then update what is going to be your uh, camera position so the target camera controller basically it's targeting a fixed point that's your target and you are allowed to move the camera itself so the camera is moving around a target the distance between the camera and the target can also be manipulated uh, with the middle mouse that's what I'm using currently so we could just have a quick look maybe into this class but at the same time, I must be careful and try to keep track of uh, the duration of this recording because I tend to make recordings that are pretty long, so sorry about that. I just said, yeah, sometimes when I start talking, I, I just can't stop, I guess. Anyway, so target camera controller, you're going to connect the handlers on a given window so you have that in the implementation file that's what you do actually in the constructor directly uh, where you're supposed to get a valid window anyway i think you must have a valid window no you actually can have an invalid window and this would just disconnect anything that was previously connected if any and so you use this window uh, to add mass motion handler so you would see then in this end here the current x and y position of your mouse and you can start um, monitoring any kind of a dragging state and uh, from that you would build two angles the theta and phi angles to control the orientation of your camera around your target point so yes and i think we have the update function here that's where you're going to try to build the transformation matrix uh, for your camera. So you just need to figure out what is your camera position. And the target position itself is usually not changing. It's just that uh, you have the view distance, which is used to position your camera correctly compared to your target. And the forward distance, this is what you're computing from a quaternion here which is uh, updating the default forward direction i don't really remember what forward is it's supposed to be plus z by default in a web gpu right yes that's it so with this function we can update 
the camera position dynamically. So we are creating this camera controller and we need then to call a date on this controller uh, regularly. And I think we have that somewhere. Let me see, probably a bit bit down here. Yes, in the render frame, the first thing we're going to do then is to call camera controller update. Once you have updated that component, what's going to happen is you get those updated angles. No, it's also connected to the camera itself, right? Um, yes, it has access to the camera, so it can set the matrix directly set look at will set up the view matrix in this camera object but then what you need to do next is to upload this matrix um, in the buffer in a buffer for your web gpu context so this is what we do most probably in this update uniform buffer so indeed you have the function just before you're going to retrieve the projection matrix and assign that into your data yeah, your CPU copy of the buffer data. Um, one thing, I don't know if I've discussed that in a previous recording, but currently I have a kind of issue, I could say, because um, in my matrix 4D implementation, I'm not using the same convention. Oh, what do I have here? The same convention as uh, in web GPU. So I'm using... Um, what am I using? I think uh, I'm using uh, row. No, I'm using column major matrices, and the web GPU expects uh, row major matrices. Or it's the opposite. I would need to check that, but I don't want to do that now. So currently, I have to transpose the matrix data when I'm preparing to copy everything on the GPU. So that's where I'm doing it. And we also do that for the U inverse matrix here. And for the model matrix, we just keep that to identity. We're not really using it for now. And when you're ready, then you can just write this uh, data into your target uniform buffer on the GPU side. So when we're done with that, you execute your render pass and you present the image. This part, I think, is not changed compared to the previous um, recording. Mm. It's still pretty tricky in the setup application here. Preparing the buffer is okay. Preparing a dev texture. Uh, I'm still here building binding groups kind of manually this way, which is something uh, I'm not doing anymore lately because this is pretty much encapsulated, but uh, let's not go too, too much uh, ahead of uh, ourselves here. So yes, you can still build your binding groups here, defining that, um, yeah, this is a binding group that will be referenced, at, referenced as default later on. And we had a uniform buffer definition with this minimal size. And then we assign a buffer corresponding to this entry, which is index zero. And that's a buffer that is going to be assigned for our binding group. So the add uniform buffer is used to define the binding group layout actually. And the set uniform buffer is used to create an actual binding group using this layout with the provided data. And then we go and we build the pipeline. But as I said, yes, I've, I've probably already explained on that in the previous version of it. Because I think this part didn't change. Yes. Or change a little but Oh my god, what's... Sorry about that. I got... I'm receiving messages, automatic messages, and the sound is very loud. Um, never mind. I'll deal with it. Um, where am I at, actually? 14 minutes, okay. 
So let's maybe just try to run this um, this code, or maybe we should also have a look at the triangle GLSL code first. What do we have in this one? We have a definition of the uniform buffer, which is going to be the binding zero in the group zero. So from there we can retrieve the projection matrix, the model matrix, and the view matrix. Okay, in this order, and then we have a vertex input which is, uh, yeah, the vertex buffer containing both position and colors for each vertex. And the output is what we're going to generate outside of uh, the vertex function. And for this vertex function, we just take the, take the input position and multiply by the projection view model matrix to generate the output position. And then we apply a uniform, oh, it's not a uniform color because you have different color for each pixel. So we should just see as, uh, as probably exactly in the previous um, version of this uh, simple, a simple triangle with three colors. Let's try to run that. So, GPU triangle SDL, I guess. Yep. And now the big difference is this. You can use the cursor to um, turn around or you can just move away or get closer to, to this triangle. And as far as I remember, this was not possible in the previous version where I just have a fixed triangle and here I cannot drag, I cannot use a wheel or anything. So that's it for the triangle SDL. What else do I need to mention in there? Mm -hmm. Two cubes, let's go to the next sample directly. I mean, there are quite a lot of them. I can't really keep detailing all this so much. I need to go faster. So two cubes, what do we have in there? What did we try to do for this one? So we have a build box helper function here, which is going to generate uh, all the vertices data for a simple box. I don't really remember what we have uh, for the vertex data here. Probably the position, normal, and UV coordinate at least. Um, the position, normal, color. Oh, wave color. If we specify wave color, you get the color and the UV coordinates after that. So that would be the UV coordinate. And I have a special function here. RGB norm to flop 32. Um, what we, we're going to do here is simply to convert an RGBA color into a single flop value because the flop actually is four bytes and you could just use those four bytes to specify a color if you use one byte per channel. So the function here is doing the required uh, conversion. And in the end, it's a single float. So we define all the faces like that. I don't think that we're using any kind, no, we're not using any kind of uh, index here. So we are repeating some of the vertices, but uh, for the first version of this function, uh, that's good enough. And so we can create a buffer from that. And there's no need for an index buffer in this case. We still have a uniform buffer because we have the uniform data that we want to send, which is containing still a projection in the view matrix. No need for model matrix in this case. Um, what else do we have? Yes, that's where I was also um, learning about this uh, consideration that you need to take on the alignment uh, of your buffer data when you want to use dynamic offsets. Uh, as far as I remember, this was about dynamic offsets, right? Let me see. 
yes, I think this part here is defining what I want as a dynamic offset. Set uniform buffer. Size. Now that's the offset part here. It's not specifically dynamic. Why do I have dynamic offset in mind then? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Create buffer, no uniform, okay. Set uniform buffer. This is still the dynamic offset. Mm. Okay, I'm a bit lost. That's a bit far away. And I don't quite remember what I was doing. Let me actually try to pause the video. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so actually, no, this was not really yet about dynamic offsets for a uh, uniform buffer. And in fact, there's another example that came not too long after this one. Uh, this one, dynamic uniform buffer. This is where we were introducing dynamic offsets. Uh, but anyway, if you're binding some uniform buffers, you have to respect this um, alignment constraint of uh, 256 bytes, which is pretty large if you think about it, but that's how it is in WebGPU, as far as I understand. Anyway, so what do we do, which is worth uh, mentioning here? Am I build one your pipeline? I think this part was already done this way in the previous example. Then yeah, we can just set the fragment entry, the layout, vertex buffer, defining what you have uh, in your vertex buffer. So we're doing the same thing here. Um so we're going to assign a vertex buffer and in this vertex buffer there will be for each vertex a position, then the normal, then the color, and then the UVs because the box that we have been building just at the start here, uh, yeah, you had the color in there and that's the buffer that you're going to assign. So again, we're going to set up the camera the same way and we prepare those different um, binding groups. What do we have exactly here? Bean shirt. Um, that's a uniform buffer where you have the camera matrices. Then bind model one. You have the model buffer in there. A uniform buffer with the model buffer. Oh, actually, we have three different cubes here, I think, not two. So you have the first model buffer, then another model buffer, which is still using the same buffer, but with the offset, and then again, the same buffer, but twice the offset. So we're pointing to three different model matrices, in fact, which are stored in this model buffer, and this model buffer, you are probably copying data in this um, dynamically. So we start with preparing the buffer here. At start, there is no data. But then, in the update uniform buffer, you're going to update the matrix, the transformation matrix for your model for the three different cubes, because num cubes is most definitely free for now and you just um, write the buffer data that's 
not really an uh, optimal way of doing it. Or it is because uh, you can't really copy. I mean, you could have a very large data uh, with this um, alignment of 256 bytes. But, um, on the CPU side, I mean, but that was not really, yeah, making a difference at this level, I believe. Okay, so that's it for the update of the uniform uh, data for the models. What else should we cover? Then you set up the rendering with the two cubs um, shader program. And you build a render bundle. When you set the pipeline, you assign this shared group, you set the vertex buffer also, and then you assign the first bind group to draw the first model. And you have 36 uh, vertices to draw. Then you draw the second model. Not that we keep the, the group at the index zero here because this one is shared and uh, you do that for those three different models and we create a render pass and we had this bundle that we just created and uh, we have an encode function here to set up uh, the render pass initial state and then the render bundle will be executed in this render pass and that's it let's see gpu uh two oops that um and again you can use a camera to rotate around those three cubes and um yeah zoom in or zoom out cool <laughs> yes i think i should stop here in fact already so we didn't go very far um just covering those two examples here what was the biggest change mm, i think it's probably this one i mean this one also the bind group builder this is actually a key component um, that i'm using um, to generate everything concerning the um, bind groups um, same thing for the render bundle builder also but um, later i'm going to basically encapsulate those two components and hide them behind uh where are they hidden actually the, inside the render node i believe yes i think it's uh, in the render node but we'll come to that a bit later anyway so for now let's just say we stop here and we'll make another recording afterwards to continue with uh, the other remaining samples thank you for watching and see you another time bye bye